Hi everyone, welcome to West Coast Muscle Saws. You've all know that I've retired, no longer repair chainsaws, but I'm still interested in the repair and just the aspect of collecting them and different ones. I don't have a large collection anymore like I used to. I do have a few, as you can see on the back wall there, and just some classics. And while cleaning up around here, I found a CD, the master CD that I'd cut back in the year 2000 on restoring uh, how-to videos on how to restore chainsaws. One of them you've seen already, the McCullough CP125. I also found the Steel 090G one that I did for some guys. And we'll, we'll have some fun and take a look at that. But anyway, I just want to go over the different aspects of collecting these old vintage saws. There's more to it than just chainsaws. This is a vintage muscle saw. And a muscle saw is just like what the muscle cars in that time zone. They were high performance. And the guys, the manufacturers would just put anything they could into it to get a high performance saw so the timber cutters would use it and then that would go down to the consumers and different ones would know somebody that was running a high performance saw and they said oh my dad and my uncle was running a real high performance saw and we want one just like what he got and then it would be the home lights this is a real classic it runs good got the decompression valve on the side here got tremendous compression just a great saw or some of the guys like the very vintage saws. This is an old IEL. And it's really unique. It was made in the 40s, late 40s. It's got a clutch lever right here in and out. So you could start this. Otherwise, they weren't real good with their clutches at the time. So you could start it in neutral, get it running, and then flip it into gear. The oiler was really unique. The fill is on the handlebars. You can see on top here brass plug that's where you fill your bar and chain oil into the handlebars quite the reservoir and then a manual pump opposite that and a swivel carburetor you pull the lever and we get the swivel up and that swivels so you couldn't run these they have a carburetor like what's on a car used to have we don't have carbs on car carbs on cars anymore but they have to run in the upright position where the carburetor needs to be so they could pop the lever, get the carburetor running where it wouldn't flood out, and have this laying on the side so you could fall trees. Just very unique stuff. Not only that, there's all kinds of other things you can do collecting saws. Let me show you a few things here. There's all the IELs, the paperworks, the really great paperwork, Partner 1000. Classic, this was one of my customers. Jenny, Jeannie, excuse me, Jenny, Jeannie, and she competed back in the 50s, and I actually donated that one model of saw she was running there to the Pioneer Museum in Canyonville, if you ever get to Canyonville, Oregon, where Seven Feathers are at. Stop in there, take a look at the saw. There's a really beautiful picture of her in there. She competed in different classes at different years. And then there's just the advertising of chainsaws. A really great one there of the Advertising Chevrolet, of course, but then they're logging, showing what they're doing with that. All kinds of paperwork to collect. This is uh, 1962. John Kennedy meeting someone there at the Oregon Saw Chain. It's great stuff. Shop manuals. Always fun to collect. Different ones. There's a repair manual. OEM stuff. 70 and 90. Very, very good information there. Titan timber saws. There's an owner's manual right there. Very unique. Got some really great information. 33B, 51, 76. I actually found these. I, uh, this, this was what we call the Ghost McCullough engine. It was never mass produced. It was the BP 399T. I acquired five of them in the original boxes. One of them is up at Wayne's Chainsaw Museum up there, still in the original box, I guess. Never fired. It was all wrapped in the saran paper, uh, just in perfect shape. Electric start, twin cylinder with a BP to char uh, charger on it to blow compressed air into the cylinder to make it more high performance. Anyway, I had five of those. I did let other collectors get them. They were very unique. 
more advertising. And then back during the muscle chainsaw age, you could modify the chainsaw engines and this, you could actually go through Hortzman and buy a brand new BP-101B ready for racing or all the parts, everything for it from all the race engines. Or you can also find out there, and this one was actually given to me, it's a signed bar from Mr. Steele just before he retired. There's all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, one of the races I was at, JJ, signed car, little, little miniature car in there. All wrapped up. All kinds of chainsaw stuff, not just chainsaws, so there's all kinds of stuff to do. But what we're going to look at today is a uh, vintage chainsaw guy from uh, year 2000. Let me give me a few minutes here to get set up. It's a teardown on a Steel 090G top end. And I made this CD slash video for guys that were repairing them and collecting them or starting to collect them at that time. And I'll get it set up and we'll take a look at it. Just hang tight for a few here. Sit back and enjoy about a half hour on us how to repair a steel 090 guys. I've got the steel 090 G chainsaw. It is their big uh, production saw capable of running a 60 inch barn chain. Uh, this morning I'd like to uh, take the cylinder piston off. We're going to inspect everything, make sure it's in good shape. Just using a few basic uh, tools, we should be able to tear this down and have it back up and running um, here just shortly. First thing we're going to do is take the barn chain off. to the side here. cap off, pull it out of its little indention. Watch it choke to hear so, so it doesn't come out. It's got a little caption there, but just make sure it doesn't come out. A little sawdust around the fans, we're clean all that out. And next way we'll uh, take the muffler off.
taking off. Good and clean inside. We're going to go ahead and pull it down though and ring it. Socket head, we're going to clean it out so you don't strip the uh, head bolt. linkage here. This is your governor and choke. And there's the cylinder. Really clean. Looks almost brand new inside. Very nice steel 90 G. top end looks like. Hopefully you can see how clean this is. It's just really in nice shape. Little carbon on the top. We're going to clean that off. Put a set of rings in it. and run. A couple things I'd like to show you is the uh, one thing is the uh, governor they had on these is quite unique. It's an air vane, very similar to your some of your four cycle uh, Briggs old Briggs engines. They had the old air vane. Well this is just Steele's version of it. And we'll pull this cover off and show you what it looks like. air vein here, hooked up to this linkage that, which is hooked up to your choke. See the movement on that? Yeah, right there. And when the saw reached a certain RPM it pushed up against this and actually closed the choke slowing the saw down. And it's real common for uh, timber cutters to take and bend this back, wrap it around here, or just cut it off 
and run it without the governor. You could do this, but you had to be very careful. Uh, this off had reached certain RPMs, had a tendency to uh, scatter, and was very dangerous for the motor and probably the operator. But uh, that's your air vane, uh, governor. That keeps the saw within the uh, specified RPM ratings from the factory. There's a good picture of the gearbox. Makes this saw so valuable. Very powerful saw. Just ideal for milling or any big timber cutting. Well, I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to uh, power wash it. Be careful when you power wash. This does have a, a breaker point ignition. Keep the moisture away from this area and just uh, be careful because, or if you do get a little moisture in here, take it apart, dry it out, clean it, and to put it back together and you'll have a nice running saw. Make sure you're wearing your safety glasses when you're out there cleaning that saw up. You want to be able to see the chips fly when you get done with this project. Clean it up. It cleaned up real good. It's a really nice st uh, steel 90G. I'm going to put a new set of rings in it and we will take it outside, gas it up, and make sure it runs good. Let's get started again. Take your set of rings. Put them on the piston. Make sure you line up the pins. Take a recompressor. And just slide that cylinder right on there. Take your ring compressor, compress the rings. Take your cylinder and just slide it right on there. That'd be a good time to put the head bolts in. It's a little easier at this time. Clean up the heads on them. Put them in place. I like to put a little bit of blue Loctite on them. as strong and you can break it free. And I'll line that cylinder up. If you post the uh, torque specs for these 090s, uh, once you've done several of them, you'll get a good feel for it. It's always good, good after the good to. Uh, they do post the specs for these head bolts. It's a good idea after you're done tightening them up to uh, put the torque wrench on. Put 
the linkage is back up again. Okay, got that part in. Let's put the uh, muffler back on. Two nuts on the back side. Leave the front support loose so everything lines up. Ready to tighten them up. It's a little difficult to get out, but with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to get right on. Okay, there's our muffler back on. Put the uh, top cowling on. When installing this cowling, make sure your choke linkage sets up in this little indention right here. And just watch as you go. You'll see what you'll see what I'm talking about. Put the uh, spark plug wire through here. Line it up so you don't pinch it. Line up your choke leggy, like that, and the cowling's ready to tighten down. Okay, you got your top cowling all tightened up. One cap in place. All we're going to do now is put the starter on, and this uh, 
classic muscle chainsaw is ready to go. cleaner on them. And there it is. Well, if there ever was a chainsaw that legends were made of, this is it. This is the Steel 090G. This saw is big brother to the Steel 090, which was a legend. Both saws were just unbelievable in power, capable of running long bars, 60 inch bars or better. This G gear series could run longer 72 inch bars and uh, had all kinds of power to uh, cut the biggest timber around here. You've heard the stories about the uh, timber cutters of the Pacific Northwest. Big men running big chainsaws, going to the bars after work and tearing the town down. Well. Some of the stories are true and others are not. Uh, they were very, very tough guys, very big men. They did uh, run these saws with 60 inch bars. They, in the morning, they would uh, load up with their ax, shovel, uh, lunch sack, wedges, and their steel 90 with a uh, 60 inch bar and chain and head over a steep bank to cut the big Douglas firs. And uh, the men did work very hard and they, uh, they did play hard too. Uh, we won't tell those stories though. One example of uh, one of my timber cutters that uh, run these saws was uh, Machine Gun Kelly, we called him. He uh, had a Steel 090 with a 60 inch bar and chain and uh, he uh, had his timber jacks they used for the big trees and he had those on his back, his 090 by his side, wedges, pouch, shovel, everything. Head over the bank, come back in and uh, Machine Gun Kelly, he weighed a good 145 pounds. Just a big man, though. Another local legend was uh, Big Jim. He uh, had one of these steel 90s, and uh, he was in big timber, and he wasn't happy with the performance of the saw, so he uh, got hold of me and another uh, steel tech, and we talked to steel. Uh, they manufactured a special stuffed crankcase and had a manifold made up for it, ran dual carburetors, expansion chamber, and uh, put a 60 inch barn chain and he fell timber that way. But now this was back in the 70's before they were uh, racing chainsaws and he was actually just cutting timber with it. Well, I hope you enjoyed tearing down his chainsaws as uh, much as I did. I, I enjoyed the big saws and had fun uh, tearing it down, showing you a few things on them. I'm going to clean up the 60 inch bar, put it on there and uh, go out and uh, do a little cutting with it. Definitely one of the biggest saws made.